sediment transport refers to the entrainment and movement of sediments by flowing water. An understanding of the principles of sediment transport is essential for the interpretation and solution of many hydraulic engineering problems. The study of sediment transport can be divided into 1. Sediment transport mechanics, 2. Sediment transport prediction, and 3. Sediment routing. Sediment transport mechanics refers to the processes by which sediments are entrained and transported by flowing water. Sediment transport prediction refers to the methods to calculate the equilibrium or steady rate of sediment transport in streams and rivers. The prediction of sediment transport is accomplished with a sediment transport formula. Sediment routing refers to the non-equilibrium or unsteady sediment transport processes, the net result of which is either the aggradation or degradation of streams or riverbeds. The energy and turbulence of the flow gives streams and rivers the capacity to entrain and transport sediment. Entrainment and transport is a function of the vertical velocity gradient near the stream bed. The sediment being transported can originate in either upland or channel sources. A significant feature of sediment transport is the entrainment and transport of the material constituting the stream bed. Thus, sediment transport is the mechanism by which streams and rivers determine their own cross-sectional geometry and boundary roughness. Sediment load or sediment discharge is the total amount of sediment transported by a stream or river past a given point, expressed in terms of weight per unit of time, based on the predominant mode of transport sediment load can be classified into 1. Bed load and 2. Suspended load. Bed load is the fraction of sediment load that moves by saltation and rolling along the stream bed, primarily by action of bottom shear stresses caused by vertical velocity gradients. Suspended load is the fraction of sediment load that moves in suspension by the action of turbulence. Particles transported as bed load are coarser than particles transported as suspended load. However, some particles may move as bed load at one point and suspended load at another. Based on whether the particle sizes are represented in the stream bed, sediment load can be classified into 1 bed material load, and two, fine material load. Bed material load is the fraction of sediment load whose particle sizes are significantly represented in the stream bed. Fine material load, commonly referred to as wash load, is the fraction of sediment load whose particle sizes are not significantly represented in the stream bed. Bed material load is the coarser fraction of sediment load, which may have originated in the channel bed and that may be subject to deposition under certain conditions. Wash load is the finer fraction of sediment load that has not originated in the channel bed and is not likely to deposit. Wash load is largely unaffected by the hydraulics of the flow. The relation between the two classifications of sediment load is shown in this table. This table shows that bed load and wash load are mutually exclusive. The middle overlap is the suspended bed material load, that is, the fraction of sediment load that moves in suspended mode and is composed of particle sizes that are represented in the channel bed. Water flowing over a stream bed has a marked vertical velocity gradient near the stream bed. This velocity gradient exerts a shear stress 
on the particles lying on the stream bed. That is a bottom shear stress. For hydraulically wide channels, the bottom shear stress is in which tau sub naught is the bottom shear stress, gamma is the specific weight of water, d is the flow depth, and s sub o is the equilibrium or energy slope. There is a threshold value of bottom shear stress above which the particles actually begin to move. This threshold value is referred to as the critical bottom shear stress or critical tractive stress. The Shields diagram shown here developed in 1936 is the earliest attempt to combine theoretical and empirical approaches to estimate critical tractive stress. This diagram depicts the threshold of motion, that is, the condition separating motion above the curve from no motion below the curve. The abscissa in the Shields diagram is the boundary Reynolds number defined as in which u star is the shear velocity, d sub s is the mean particle diameter, and nu is the kinematic viscosity of water. The shear velocity is defined as in which rho is the density of water. The ordinate in the Shields diagram is the dimensional extractive stress defined as in which tau star is the dimensional extractive stress and gamma sub s is the specific weight of the sediment particles. The Shields diagram shows that within a mid-range of boundary Reynolds number, say from 2 to 200, the dimensionless critical tractive stress can be taken as a constant for practical purposes. Within this range, the critical tractive stress is proportional to the sediment size. For instance, assuming a dimensionless critical tractive stress equal to 0.04, from the Shields diagram, the critical tractive stress is For quartz particles, the specific weight of the sediment particles is The critical tractive stress reduces to In this equation, the critical tractive stress is in pounds per square foot and the particle diameter in feet. With particle diameter in inches, in which d50 is the mean particle diameter. This equation compares favorably with Lane's equation for permissible tractive stress, in which d75 is the particle diameter for which 75% of the material by weight is finer. The initiation of motion by Shields criterion can be calculated online at online calc.sdsu.edu slash online shields dot php Streams and rivers create their own geometry. Alluvial rivers determine their cross-sectional shape and boundary friction is a function of the prevailing water and sediment discharge. 
an inherent property of river flows is their tendency to minimize changes in stage caused by changes in discharge. This is accomplished through a continuous adjustment in boundary friction in such a way that high values of friction prevail during low flows and low values prevail during high flows. Adjustments in boundary friction are made possible by the existence of bed forms which develop during low flows and are obliterated during high flows. Boundary friction consists of two parts, one, grain roughness, and two, form roughness. Grain roughness is a function of particle size. Form roughness is a function of the size and extent of bed forms. Grain roughness is essentially a constant, while form roughness varies with the flow. Several forms of bed roughness can exist in rivers. In the absence of sediment movement, the bed configuration is that of plain bed with no sediment motion. With sediment movement, the following forms of bed roughness have been identified. 1. Ripples. 2. Dunes and superposed ripples. 3. Dunes. 4. Washed out dunes. 5. Plain bed. 6. Anti-dune standing waves. 7. Anti-dunes breaking wave. And 8. Chute and pool. Sketches of these forms of bed roughness are shown here. The occurrence of different forms of bed roughness is related to the median fall diameter of the bed material and the stream power of the flow. Stream power is defined as the product of bottom shear stress and mean velocity. The stream power versus median fall diameter diagram is shown here. For low stream power, there is no bed load transport. This is the condition of plain bed with no sediment motion. An increase in stream power leads to ripples, then to dunes with superposed ripples, and subsequently to dunes. However, ripples are a rare occurrence for sediments coarser than 0.6 millimeters. Dunes are longer and bigger than ripples and occur at velocities and sediment loads that are greater than those of ripples. Plain bed with sediment motion occurs when the stream power is large enough to obliterate the dunes, essentially eliminating form roughness. The plain bed represents the condition of minimum boundary friction. For high values of stream power, Anti-dunes form in conjunction with surface waves, usually under supercritical flow conditions. In very steep streams, the bed configuration resembles a series of chutes and pools. The assessment of bed form type has significant practical implications. Bed forms determine boundary roughness. In turn, boundary roughness determines river stages. Ripples are associated with Manning's ends in the range 0.018 to 0.030, with form roughness usually being a fraction of grain roughness. Dunes are associated with Manning's end in the range 0.02 to 0.04, with form roughness of the same order of magnitude as grain roughness. Plain bed with sediment motion is associated with relatively low Manning's end values in the range 0.012 to 0.015 with minimal form roughness.
for a given volume of water sediment mixture, the suspended sediment concentration is the ratio of the weight of dry sediment to the weight of the water sediment mixture, expressed in parts per million. To convert the concentration in parts per million to milligrams per liter, multiply the value in parts per million times a factor F. This factor varies from 1 for concentrations less than 15,900 parts per million to 1.3 for concentrations of 380,000 as shown here. For low sediment concentrations, typical of most applications, concentrations in parts per million and milligrams per liter are essentially equivalent. The suspended sediment concentration varies along the vertical. It is higher near the stream bed and lower near the water surface. The coarsest sediment fractions, typically those in the sand size, exhibit the greatest variation in concentration along the vertical. Conversely, the finer fractions, that is, those of silt and clay size, show a tendency for a nearly uniform distribution of concentration along the vertical. The trend is depicted in the dimensionless chart shown here. In this chart, the abscissa is the relative sediment concentration, defined as the sediment concentration along the flow depth, divided by the concentration at a reference distance equal to 5% of the flow depth. The ornet is the relative distance, or the distance measured along the depth, divided by the flow depth. In either case, 5% of the flow depth is subtracted from the actual values. The curve parameter is the Rouse number, in which W is the fall velocity of sediment particles. Beta is a coefficient relating mass and momentum transfer, equal to 1 for fine sediments. Kappa is von Karman's constant, equal to 0.4 for clear fluids, and U star is the shear velocity. This figure shows that high Rouse numbers on the order of 1.93 correspond to the sand sizes, while low Rouse numbers around 0.16 correspond to the clay sizes. The terms sediment load sediment discharge and sediment transport rate are synonymous. However, the terms bed load, suspended bed material load, and wash load are mutually exclusive. Sediment transport prediction refers to the estimation of sediment transport rates under steady equilibrium flow conditions. There are many formulas for the calculation of sediment transport. Most formulas compute only bed material load, consisting of bed load and suspended bed material load. Some formulas compute bed load only. One formula computes total sediment load, which consists of bed load, suspended bed material load, and wash load. All sediment transport formulas have empirical components. Therefore, they are most applicable within the range of data used in their development. The Du Bois formula is widely recognized as one of the earliest attempts to develop a sediment transport predictor. The Du Bois formula is in which Q sub S is the unit width bed material transport rate in pounds per second per foot. Psi sub d is a Du Bois parameter which varies with the particle size and has units of cubic feet per pound per second. Tau sub naught is the bottom shear stress in pounds per square foot and tau sub c is the critical tractive stress 
in pounds per square foot. Values of the Du Bois parameter in critical stress as a function of particle size are shown here. The Du Bois formula can be calculated online at this address online cult .stsu.edu slash online Du Bois .php. In 1950, Professor Hans Einstein published a procedure for the computation of sediment load by size fractions. The method is referred to as Einstein's bed load function. It was developed based on theoretical considerations of turbulent flow supported by laboratory and field data. Einstein's bed load function first computes the bed load transport rate. Then it uses this transport rate to aid in the integration of the suspended sediment concentration profile and the flow velocity profile. The result is the bed material transport rate per individual size fractions. The Einstein bed load function is the basis of the modified Einstein procedure. This procedure was developed by Colby and Hembury in 1955 in order to include actual measurements of suspended load into the framework of the original Einstein method. Typically, measurements of suspended load do not include A, the bed load, and B, the fraction of suspended load moving too close to the stream bed to be effectively sampled. The modified Einstein procedure calculates total sediment load by size fractions consisting of bed load, suspended bed material load, and wash load. It requires the measured fraction as input and calculates the unmeasured fraction. Thus, it is the most complete method for sediment transport computations. The modified Einstein procedure can be calculated online at onlinecalc.sdsu.edu slash online modified Einstein dot php. In 1964, Colby published a method to calculate the discharge of sands in sand bed streams. The development of the Colby method was guided by the Einstein bed load function and supported by large amounts of laboratory and field data. The method provides a good prediction of bed material transport rate in the sand sizes. It requires the following input data. One, mean flow depth. Two, mean channel width. Three, mean velocity. Four, water temperature. Five, wash load concentration. And six, median bed material size. The procedure is as follows. One, use this figure to determine the uncorrected discharge of sands, Q sub U, as a function of depth, mean velocity, and sediment size. Two, for water temperature of 60 degrees Fahrenheit, wash load concentration less than 1,000 ppm, and sediment size in the range 0.2 to 0.3 millimeters, no further correction is required. Three, for other conditions, use this figure to determine the correction factors K sub 1 for temperature, K sub 2 for wash load concentration, and K sub 3 for bed material size. The corrected discharge of sands Q sub S is The Colby method can be calculated online at 
online cult dot SDSU dot edu slash online Kobe dot PHP. A useful curve in sediment analysis is the sediment rating curve, defined as the relation between water discharge and sediment discharge at a given site. For a given water discharge, the sediment rating curve allows the estimation of sediment discharge, assuming steady equilibrium flow conditions. The sediment rating curve is a plot showing water discharge in the abscissas and sediment discharge in the ordnance. This plot is obtained either A, by the simultaneous measurement of water and sediment discharge, or B, by the use of sediment transport formulas. For low water discharges, the sediment rating curve usually shows an increase in sediment concentration with water discharge. For high water discharges, the sediment rating curve has a tendency to approach asymptotically a line of equal sediment concentration, as shown here. This difference in behavior is attributed to the varying effect of form friction on sediment transport from low to high flow rates. Like the single value stage discharge rating, the single value sediment rating curve is strictly valid only for steady equilibrium flow conditions. For strongly unsteady flows, the existence of loops in both water and sediment rating curves has been demonstrated. These loops are complex in nature and are likely to vary from flood to flood. In practice, loops in both water and sediment rating are commonly disregarded. The calculation of sediment yield is of zero order, that is, it does not provide a measure of the spatial or temporal variability of sediment production or yield within the watershed or basin. Sediment transport formulas are invariably based on the assumption of steady uniform flow. Sediment routing refers to the distributed and unsteady calculation of sediment production, transport, and deposition in catchments, streams, rivers, reservoirs, and estuaries. Sediment routing is used where the description of spatial and temporal variations of sediment production, transport, and deposition is warranted. The sediment continuity equation, also referred to as the Exner equation, is used in sediment routing. The equation states the balance between the gradient of sediment transport rate and the rate of change in bed elevation within a control volume, in which Q sub S is the unit width bed material transport rate, Z is the bed elevation, P is the porosity of the material forming the stream bed, and gamma sub S is the specific weight of the sediment particles. Sediment routing is particularly useful in studies of aggradation and degradation in rivers and reservoirs.